Yeah, I, I um, for, from a young age, um, I realized there was a lot of discrimination going on um, with my family and also, um, you know, later with um, Asians in general. And then, um, and then, you know, around junior high school, I started, you know, understanding that it was connected to the civil rights movement, uh, what was going on in the history of uh, Native Americans in this country, the history of African Americans, Latino Americans. I mean, it's, uh, yeah. Uh, so, <clears throat> um, well, first of all, when, 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 when I was two, <laughs> we moved from uh, East Los Angeles to an area called La Habra. And uh, I guess there was a petition sent around the neighborhood asking people's reaction to a Jap family moving in. This is uh, right after the, well, 10 years after the war had ended. Um, and uh, of course that was an illegal petition and our next door neighbors actually ended up telling us about, about it because they refused to sign it. Um, but anyway, um, there was a lot of, um, uh, we used to get rocks thrown at us, and this is when we were really little. Um, and uh, me, me and my brother, we used to get in fights on the way home and stuff. Um, it was primarily coming from both um, uh, white people as well as um, Chicanos in the area. They, they just, you know, the, the war had just ended and they, they didn't want Japanese in their area, I guess. But, um, and, uh, yeah, so it, it, um, I, I remember the, the this is a, this is the night my father passed away, but he, uh, we, we lived in a working class part of the, town and uh, it took I, it, my mom said it took like an hour and a half or something like that for the ambulance to come and by that time he was dead and so um <clears throat> uh so just um things like that <laughs> uh, personally but um i i started really getting into um being more politically aware and active um, i guess in high school and that was primarily the anti-war movement, anti-Vietnam War movement, and the civil rights movement, which was going on. This is a, um, I started high school in 1968 and graduated in 1971. Um, so it was around that time when all that, all that stuff was going on. Thank you for sharing that story, though, about your father. Um, yeah, he, he, my father was Issei, uh, and he, he was seven when I passed. I mean, I was seven when he passed away, so didn't really get to, um, know him that much. But uh, I know that they had a, they had a hard time, like during the war and, and, uh, things like that. And, um, they, they did not go to the camps in, because they were, um, their relatives urged them to uh, evacuate voluntarily, but as it as it turns out, um, my mom said it, you know it would have been it would have been safer and they would have had room and board if they were in the camps as opposed to outside. There was so much hostility going on, so they first went to um, Ogden, Utah, and um, our we have relatives that worked. Uh, I had potato farms and uh, they were helping out there and they realized that they were kind of a burden to the relatives and so they moved to uh, Ogden, Utah and that's where my older two sisters were born and the only uh, people that helped them was a Christian church so um, they kind of became associated with that church at that time and um, uh, yeah, I guess they lived there for about five years or so. Um, and then the, uh, so my two oldest sisters were born there and then, and then there's five of us in total. And then, and then my, uh, the third 
sister and my older brother um, were, and myself, we were all born in LA. And we were living in East LA at the time. Well, I think um, in particular for this moment, um, we really have to support African Americans because, um, uh, I mean, it's ridiculous to get into an argument of which minority group or which um, ethnic group has suffered the most, but um, clearly, um, you know, African Americans and Native Americans have suffered a great deal in this country. Uh, that's not to, um, you know, diminish uh, what has gone on to other groups, Latinos and Asians. Um, so I think we we all have to unite, and even um, you know, white people who who support um, these kind of civil rights. I think we all have to really unite and try to get something done. And, and you had mentioned about, um, you know, why you think about what's going on now with the protests. I think it's 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 great. I think uh, I haven't seen this kind of protest going on since since the '60s and '70s. And it was both anti-war uh, at the time as well as civil rights. So I think it's great, and I, there's all these young people involved in. Uh, it's great to see that energy and, and concern, uh, not only in this country, but all over the world. It has to do with civil rights, but all has also has to do with um, being proud of who you are, where you came from. Um, I think. Um, if I look at African American music, um, there's several approaches um, people I have admired have taken. For example, I don't know if you're familiar with a singer named Gil Scott Heron, who was uh, popular in the 70s, but uh, he um, had a really amazing message. Uh, he sang and he did rap before rap was even uh, a popular genre, but. Um, yeah, he, he was, so he was very literal. Um, there was jazz artists like Rasan and Lola Kirk, who were incredible musicians, but also had a very strong message when they played. Uh, and then there were people like John Coltrane and Miles Davis, who didn't necessarily get on the bandstand to talk about things, although they, they did do that on occasion. But their music um, spoke uh, for the, for itself and the music was so strong and it made people, it made African Americans as well as just people, human beings proud of this music that they created. So I think um, all the demonstrations and all the things that people are demanding, it, 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 it's definitely, um, it's definitely worth working for those, um, kind of changes, but I think we also have to move beyond being a victim and and working toward transforming society so that these things don't happen and that, and that better things come out of this. So I think um, music and taiko in particular um, can have a role in that. It's not simply to entertain people. Um, it can be entertaining, but uh, I think uh, taiko has that power to to heal, to transform, to change society. So I think um, looking at it from that point, um, there's a way we that people who play taiko can have a different role in this movement that's um, going on right now. <laughs> 